The TMEA All-State Saxophone Etudes have now been released. The etudes chosen were Fairlings 28, 31, and 10. And in this video, I'm gonna give some advice on how I'd start learning these etudes. So back in 2020, I made the Texas All-State Band, and it was something that I worked very diligently towards. If you aren't from Texas and you aren't sure how this process works, I'll give you a quick rundown. So TMEA splits the state up into 32 different regions in which you will audition for a region band. My region was made up of two bands and one freshman band in which the top two people advanced to the area round. Each area is made up of four of these regions, making there a total of eight areas. The area round is usually in January, right after winter break. There are no bands, it is just an audition. There are eight people in the room in which two make the Allstate band. It's kind of complicated, some regions do things differently, but that's usually how it works. Before we look at these new etudes, I first want to go through some general advice that I have for when it comes to these auditions. The biggest thing for me was to play these etudes really slow at first. For the first one to two months, my lesson teacher only allowed me to play the fast etudes at half tempo. This was both a blessing and a curse because although it was boring, it allowed me to develop really good habits at that slow tempo. Think about it, you could possibly be working on these etudes for up to six months, and if you go too fast immediately, you could miss the front end of the learning process. With the two fast etudes, start at 50 or 60 BPM and work to make them really interesting at that tempo. Doing this is gonna do wonders for you in the later months. My next piece of advice for you is to work on scales and arpeggios a lot throughout this process. These etudes are built on fundamentals and getting really comfortable with these is going to be key. Another thing I would do is perform a lot the second you get into that audition room, you're going to feel uncomfortable, so getting comfortable with being uncomfortable is going to be important. Maybe once a week, get some friends together and do a little mock audition. Getting ears to listen to what you've been working on is going to be really helpful. Remember that practicing is very different to performing. I remember playing a lot for my parents, and even though they can't give me really good feedback, it's really nice to practice performing. I'm not sure if this is a bit of a hot take, but in my opinion, the lyrical etude is the most important because I think it can set you apart the most. Think about it, once you get into that area room, most people are playing the fast etude pretty similarly, so having a good lyrical etude can be the thing that advances you. Find a way to make that etude your own and don't be afraid to take risks with your musicality. I know it's the slow etude and it may not be as fun as the other two, but let's try and value it a little bit more. All right. Let's dive into the etudes chosen. If you need copies of this year's saxophone etudes, I've linked below Dr. James Barker's website in which he has provided nice and clean horizontal copies of this year's etudes. <laughs> Looking at Fairling number 28, it's in the key of C minor, so make sure to work on lots of C minor, scale, and arpeggio variations. If you look at measure 13, there are a few wrong notes, and these changes can be found in the errata on the TMEA website, which I will link below. There are two main articulation patterns found in this etude, tongue 1 slur 3 and slur 2 slur 2. I highly recommend incorporating these articulation patterns into your scales and arpeggios. Moving on to etude number 31, it is in the key of C sharp minor, so a pretty unfamiliar key to us saxophone players. It also has a lot of accidentals, so be careful when you're learning this etude and make sure you're playing the correct notes. The tempo is marked 16th note equals 92, so if we turn our metronome on, each note in the first measure will get two clicks. Once that tempo starts to feel a bit more comfortable, I would suggest moving the tempo down to 46, which is half tempo, so that you can start working at that eighth note feel. Like I said earlier, use this etude to set you apart, so I suggest finding ways to make musical risks dynamically. Finally, looking at the third etude, number 10, we're in the key of F major, so something a little bit more familiar. There's no errata, so nothing to worry about on that front. If you look at the middle section of this etude, you get a little bit of a lyrical type of thing. Use this to your advantage and try and take musical risks like in the second etude. And just like etude one, incorporate all of these articulation patterns into your scales and arpeggios. If you take a look at measure 27, a common error that will occur is an incorrect rhythm. Many people will turn these into triplets and start to swing the rhythm. You have to make sure that these dotted 16, 30 seconds are really snappy. That's why taking this etude really slow at first 
can be your best friend. I hope that all of this was helpful. If you have any questions, make sure to comment those down below. Don't forget to go slow. This is a long journey, so keep up the hard work even in the times where you don't want to. I'll see you guys later. Peace.